Patrick Pierce's philosophy on education is best summed up in this line from The Murder Machine, a treatise on education he published in January 1916. He wrote that the main objective in education is to help the child to be his own true and best self. Pierce's interest in education originally stemmed from his belief that it was the key to the future survival of the Irish language. Pierce opened his school in 1908 and named it Scolena in honour of St Enda, the patron saint of the Iron Islands, famed for his teaching. The school was located in Collinswood House between the Dublin suburbs of Ranala and Rathmines. It was an attractive Georgian house and had previously been the home of the 19th century historian W. E. H. Lecky. In his prospectus for the school, Pierce announced that it had been founded with the object of providing an elementary and secondary education distinctly Irish in complexion, bilingual in method and of a high modern type generally for Irish Catholic boys. In teaching Irish, Pierce championed what he referred to as Unmoduroch. This was based on the direct method, a visual system of language learning which he had earlier seen used in Belgian schools. Pierce also encouraged his pupils to learn Irish through conversation, and his aim was to make it the everyday language of the school. Pierce and his teachers used the Cúchulainn charts and textbook produced by the Dundalgan Press as an aid to teaching Irish in the school, and we can see some examples of pages from those charts here. Uh, this chart is now in the collection of the Pierce Museum. Pierce wrote in the school prospectus about the care that had been taken with the decoration of the school and the carefully considered scheme of colouring and design. His aim was to encourage in the boys a love of comely surroundings and the formation of their taste in art. In the classroom, beautiful pictures, statuary and plants replaced the charts and other paraphernalia of the ordinary schoolroom. Pierce's brother William joined the school as the art teacher. William also played a key role in staging and directing the school's theatrical productions. As the years progressed and Patrick became more and more caught up in revolutionary politics, William took on a lot of the responsibility for the practical running of the school. Among William Pierce's pupils in the early years of the school was Patrick Toohey. Toohey would later become one of the leading Irish artists of his generation and some of his caricatures uh, which he drew of teachers and his fellow pupils, appeared in the school magazine on Machiv. Pierce said the school would take inspiration from the ancient Gaelic tradition of fosterage, when a young boy would be sent to be raised and taught by a neighbouring clan. The involvement of his family was a key part of Pierce's vision for Scolena. In addition to his brother William's role as art master, his sister Mary Bridget taught music, while his other sister Margaret was an assistant mistress. His mother acted as housekeeper. A former pupil, Kenneth Redden, later remarked upon how uninstitutional the school felt, and he attributed this to the fact that women had the charge of domestic arrangements. Pierce emphasised his mother and sister's involvement in the school prospectus, and suggested that, in conjunction with its private character, this made it specially suited for the education of sensitive and delicate boys. The school quickly developed a reputation for the quality and innovation of their theatrical performances. On the 22nd of March 1909, the boys performed on Naver Era, The Lost Saint, by Douglas Hyde in the Theatre of Collinswood House, as part of a double bill with The Coming of Fionn by Standish O'Grady. Among the audience was the academic Stephen Gwynne, Edward Martin, Porrick Collum, Owen McNeil, Mary Hayden, Mr and Mrs Don Pyatt, Count and Countess Markovich, Agnes O'Farley, Sir John Rees, W. B. Yeats and Standish O'Grady, who was accompanied by his wife. The performance took place in a little corrugated iron shed in the grounds where a stage had been erected. The heroes of the ancient Irish saga, such as Fionn Michul and Cúchulainn, were presented as role models to the boys of Scolena. Pierce saw the school as being in the tradition of the ancient boy corps of Own Macha, in which the young Cúchulainn had been raised and educated. In that tradition, children were brought together in, as Pierce wrote, some pleasant place under the fosterage of some man famous among his people for his greatness of heart, for his wisdom, for his skill in some gracious craft. A former pupil from Scolena remarked that Cúchulainn was mentioned so often in the school it was as if he was an important but invisible member of staff. 
These images of Cuchulain were drawn in the 1920s by Patrick Tuhi for an edition of Standish O'Grady's novels entitled The Coming of Cuchulain and In the Gates of the North, which were published by the Talbot Press. To mark the end of the school's first year in 1909, Pierce wrote an elaborate pageant entitled The Boy Deeds of Cuchulain. Pierce said that he hoped it would crown our first year's work with something worthy and symbolic. He went on to say that he was anxious to send our boys home with a knightly image of Cuchulain in their hearts and his knightly words ringing in their ears. They will leave St. Enda's under the spell of the magic of their most beloved hero, the Mochiv, who is, after all, the greatest figure in the epic of their country, indeed, as I think, the greatest epic of the world. Frank Dowling is photographed here in the costume he wore playing the title role. Writing in a mock eve in December 1909, Pierce spoke about his pleasure at the success of the school's athletic teams. Our boys must now be among the best hurlers and footballers in Ireland. Wellington is credited with the dictum that the Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Eton. I am certain that when it comes to a question of Ireland winning battles, her main reliance must be on her hurlers. To your commands, O oh boys of Banba. Drill and physical education played a central role in the school's curriculum. The boys in this picture taken in 1909 wear kilts, an optional school uniform which, according to the school prospectus, provided an economical, hygienic and becoming costume for boys. Some years after this photo was taken, Con Colbert, who would later be executed for his part in the 1916 Rising, became physical education master and introduced the Swedish method, a more militarised approach to exercise in school, with an emphasis on discipline, marching and military skill. Pierce identified nature study and physical science as an essential part of the work of St. Endes. In 1910, he moved his school from the suburban Rathmines to the foothills of the Dublin mountains in Rathfarnham, in the belief that it would provide scope for that outdoor life, that intercourse with the wild things of the woods and the wastes, that ought to play so large a part in the education of a boy. Pierce's decision to relocate his school to what is now the Pierce Museum in St. Endes Park in Rathfarnham was also motivated by the property's association with the revolutionary Robert Emmett. Emmett is said to have frequently walked in the grounds in secret with his sweetheart Sarah Curran in the early 1800s. Pierce hoped that these historic associations would help his pupils to connect with the past and draw inspiration from it. He described the property's connection with Emmett in the 1910 edition of the school magazine. We know that Emmett walked underneath these trees. Some of them were already old, when, with bent head, he passed beneath their branches up the walk, tapping the ground with his cane, as was his wont. He must have often sat in this room where I now sit, and, lifting his eyes, have seen that mountain as I see it now. It is Kilmishog, amid whose bracken he was to crouch the night that soldiers were in Butterfield House, bathed in a purple haze as the yellow wintry sun sets, while Tobraddon has grown dark behind it. I do not think that a house could have a richer memory to treasure, or a school a finer inspiration, than that of that quiet figure with his eyes on Kilmishog. Pupils and teachers at Pierce's school were encouraged to use the extensive grounds of what is now St. Enda's Park to observe and learn about the natural world at first hand. Pierce wrote that, if our boys observe their fellow creatures of the grass and woods and water as wisely and as lovingly as they should, I think they will learn much. Boys were first introduced to the natural world in the school garden, where they were taught practical gardening and elementary agriculture by Miel McRory, a native Irish-speaking gardener who was also a prize-winning and much-respected traditional storyteller. Any boy who wished it was allotted a plot of ground which he was at liberty to plan out and cultivate according to his own taste. The school also had a museum which contained zoological, botanical and geological specimens, together with some illustrations of industrial processes and a few objects of historical and antiquarian interest. It was cared for by a curator elected from amongst the student body. Many of the specimens came from the pupils themselves, and the school magazine recorded donations by the boys of seashells, butterflies, dragonflies and sawflies. All the specimens in the museum had to have had a natural end, as the boys were under a solemn gesa or obligation not to kill wild things. 
Pierce regularly held an Eireacht or Open Day at the school to promote Skolena. These events attracted many leading cultural figures to the school. This photograph was taken of those who attended the Eireacht of 1914. Among the group were Douglas Hyde, Owen McNeil, Agnes O'Farrelly and Eamon Kiant. The second photograph shows an open-air pageant performed on that occasion, Fionn a dramatic spectacle. Pierce took advantage of the beautiful location of his school in the foothills of the Dublin Mountains to provide a dramatic backdrop for the school's productions. Both Patrick and William Pierce would later be executed for their role in the 1916 Rising. Although Scalena continued until 1935 under the leadership of Pierce's mother and sister, in many ways much of what was innovative and exciting about the school died with them. However, there is much we can still learn from Patrick Pierce's emphasis on providing children with an education which nurtures their talents and recognises their individuality. Pierce's educational legacy is perhaps best expressed in his poem, I Have Not Garnered Gold. Of riches or of store I shall not leave behind me, yet I deem it, O God, sufficient, but my name in the heart of a child. If you want to find out more about Pierce and his educational work, why not visit the Pierce Museum and explore our exhibition, Who is Pierce?